stories. More arrests made of persons breaching COVID regulations. Additional quarantine sites approved and Education Ministry taking extra steps to protect CXC exam students. The details on these stories and more after the break. Look at you. No braces. All the internet you can handle. I wasn't so lucky. Invis is not your parents' braces. Invis is predictable, less painful, more comfortable. Invisalign. Visit Dr. Blake's General Dentistry and Orthodontics located on South Independence Square Street for your free Invisalign consultation. Call 466-7622 for your appointments. Without limits, happy and free. The skin you're in with no apology. The one to seize the day. Grab an LLB. Live, love, be. Through a lemon, lime, and bitters, live, love, be trustworthy, secure, reliable, and responsive. These are just some of the words customers use to describe their experience with the Bank of Nevis Limited. And after 35 years of delivering excellent customer service and honoring our corporate social responsibilities in the island of Nevis, we are finally in St. Kitts. Come and experience why we're not just another option. We are the standard. Bonstrom. Welcome to the ZIZ Channel 5 newscast. I'm Carla Barrage. The police have been making more arrests this week of persons who have breached the COVID-19 regulations, including the host of a private party. During his presentation at the NEOC COVID-19 briefing on Wednesday, Divisional Commander of District A, Superintendent Cromwell Henry, said the force continues to see too many persons outside of their homes without authorization. Since my last presentation on Monday, the police have arrested two persons for breaches of the regulations. One for breaching the night curfew and one for hosting a private party without permission. Twelve persons were issued with tickets for attending a private party and five for failing to wear masks in public. We prefer voluntary compliance with the regulations. However, the police are prepared to do our part to reduce the number of new infections by enforcing the law with respect to the wearing of masks, hosting or attending social activities without permission, and for breaching the night curfew and the shelter-in-place order. He reminded that the regulations are intended to protect the public and asked for everyone's cooperation in following the rules. The government has recently approved additional accommodations for persons who need to be quarantined. This was revealed by Superintendent of Police, Cromwell Henry, who was speaking during ZIZ Radio's program, Policing With You, on Thursday. The government has recently approved additional accommodation for, for persons in these circumstances. So shortly we, will be, we have more space available to have these persons at a facility rather than having them to be at home. He said persons who are to be in self-quarantine are being observed on the street with other individuals from the general public. Superintendent Henry is asking persons not to accommodate these individuals as they are breaking the protocols. Well, it's good that when members of the public know that these persons are to be in quarantine, you call them out. You tell them, girl, go home. Me selling you no beer. Me selling. Don't allow them to be around you. Don't harbor them. Embarrass them so that they, 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 they don't feel comfortable around you. If you know they're supposed to be in quarantine, and they come to hang out with you, avoid them. Tell them, I'm not staying here with you. If they don't want to leave, then you leave. Mm -hmm. Make them feel uncomfortable so that they don't feel comfortable hanging out with a group of persons. 
He's asking these persons to please cooperate with the health authorities and stay home as the government will not be able to accommodate all persons needing to be in quarantine. Students will be sitting CXC exams beginning Monday and the Ministry of Education has been taking steps to ensure the safety of everyone involved. Minister of Education Honorable John L. Powell told ZIZ News that the ministry has met extensively with the Ministry of Health and the COVID-19 Task Force to ensure that additional protocols are put in place to protect the students and invigilators and other administrators. We would have put plans in place which include but are not limited to limiting the number of students in any given examination room ensuring that we have additional invigilators on board to help to administer the examinations. Uh, we would have put protocols in place in terms of um, transportation to and from examinations, the checking process. We are ensuring that our invigilators are wearing both face masks as well as face shields to protect them and the students. He said the ministry is also ensuring that they have additional cleaning staff on board who will be working throughout the day. We have multiple examinations that are administered in a given day. And so between those sessions, we have cleaning staff who are going to go and, and ensure that all high-touch areas in particular are cleaned so that the next uh, cohort that comes in is, is as safe as the first one. Minister Powell said as schools are closed right now, the empty classrooms will be used to allow exam participants to be spread out over a wider area. He said the Ministry of Education recognizes that this is a tough period for teachers and students and they are doing all they can to ensure that the students can take the exams in a safe and healthy environment. We now take a look at the nation's COVID-19 situation report and a vaccination update. After the break, inspection waived for vehicles with licenses ending with six. And National HIV AIDS Program Coordinator speaks about HIV and COVID-19. Stay with us. There is no better time to discover what your National Bank Visa debit or black cards can do. Mimi, what's that song? can get you out of a pickle. Using my National Bank Visa card is fast, secure, and convenient. Cashless Eska N is our new lifestyle choice. National Bank, always here. Like the dude who was shopping at furniture and appliances. See my friend, you look like you buy something from the Ashley Home Store. How oh, you know? Because we get the cash back coupons, coupons and, and the free, free groceries for a year. Cash back is back at Horsford's Furniture and Appliances and Ashley Furniture. Shop now and get a chance to win free groceries for one year. Flow Broadband and TV is packed with even more value as you get a free Samsung tablet, free installation and 50% off your bill for 3 months when you sign up now. Yes, a free Samsung tablet. Power all you do at home with up to 100 megabits per second super fast broadband. Plus, stay HD entertained with Flow TV. Stream, share and do more on your new free tablet which will also keep you connected on the go with ease. Sign up at a Flow store today. Conditions apply. Welcome back. 
Here's some good news for drivers whose licenses end with six. The Licensing Authority and the Inland Revenue Department are waiving their vehicle inspections for June. This was revealed by Sergeant Calvin Amri from the Traffic Department during ZIZ Radio's On the Road program on Wednesday. He explained that due to the current statutory rules and orders, which stipulates that only essential businesses are to operate during the 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. window, inspection depots are closed at this time. The Licensing Authority and the Inner Revenue Department, we have made a decision to waive the, the inspection of those vehicles because what happened here fine for the month of June, because of the fact that, you know, the inspection depots are not in operation presently and there are some persons who would want to get their, license, their vehicles licensed and we work out it's difficult times and some person will still need to drive and we allow that. Sergeant Amri is however appealing to these persons to ensure that their vehicles are in proper working condition before going on the road. With the COVID-19 pandemic being the main medical focus for the past year, less attention has been paid to other illnesses such as HIV AIDS. In an interview with the director of the St. Kitts Nevis Information Service, Leslie Williams, National HIV AIDS Program Coordinator, Dr. Matthias O'Frey, said there are similarities that can be recognized between COVID-19 and HIV. Both have widely spread across the globe and affecting the most vulnerable and has created and has it have a very great impact negative impact on the health and social um, economics and social supporting system as well as the economy of course board has a conscious uh, prevention measure like putting on a mask and wearing condoms um, social distancing and and you know and hand sanitizing and so on and so forth basically so both of them are, are are still things that we are learning more about and putting more effort to ensure you know that it can be the spread can be mitigated he said the pandemic has also had a great impact on access to services offered as covid-19 well, um, rapidly spread in 2020 um, outpatient consultation greatly declined due to uh, some reasons. One being that patients were scared of being exposed to um, the COVID-19. And the other aspect is that due to limited access, you know, means of transportation, due to the curfew and the restriction, travel restrictions, um, patients were actually finding it difficult to access health facilities. Dr. Ofrey noted that due to the pandemic, the number of tests worldwide has dropped by approximately 41%. This, he says, can lead to an increase in the HIV-AIDS infection rate. A holistic approach to transforming the lives of juveniles needing guidance is being taken by the management of the New Horizons Rehabilitation Center. While appearing on Working For You on Wednesday, Shani Sam, a case worker at the institution, explained some of the steps being taken to assist the residents during the intake process. We go through a process of assessments. So we will start with a psychological assessment to see if there's anything that we need to kind of put a little bit more of attention to. Um, we do an educational assessment. We do a medical assessment. We do a dental, physical, everything really and truly so that we can create a holistic plan for the child. We also go through the process of creating a behavioral contract with the child. So the child will then identify to us what they think some of the behaviors um, are for them that they need to work on. Additionally, both parent and child or children are invited to sit and discuss when behavioral changes started, what the child thinks needs to be changed about themselves, what the facility is about and its rules, as well as the responsibilities and roles of parents, although the child is not in their primary care. As changed behavior is identified according to the behavioral contract established, rewards are given to the individuals to encourage them to continue changing. Although juveniles spend a considerable amount of time in the facility, house parent Culbert Brown, who was also a guest, explained the roles of the five house parents. The role of house parents is um, to look after the child's well-being, 
on a daily, um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, um, just like any other home, with a with a parent, you make sure that the child is well looked after. Um, make sure he do any chores. Yes. Um, teach him um, tidiness. Teach him all the essential things that he will have to go out to the, go back home to society or to his community. Mm -hmm. And then try make some different changes within his life, especially from his mental aspect. Mm -hmm. So we will we have like five house parents only that should be on each one should be on each shift. And that's we will basically to make sure that the kid is doing the right thing. Right. Now what have you discussed? Ms. Sam noted that juveniles who make their way to the home are coming from areas with heightened criminal activity, poverty-stricken, or are lacking a sound structural home. The rehabilitation center advocates for parental involvement, although the children are presently in the care of the parents, to ensure that everyone is on the same page, Ms. Sam said. And finally on the local scene, St. Kitts was featured in a story on the Boston Magazine website titled Five Reasons Why St. Kitts is the Hidden Gem of the Caribbean, penned in partnership with the team at Boston Magazine. The feature outlines five enticing reasons for visiting St. Kitts from its history to its beaches. According to a statement from the St. Kitts Tourism Authority, the partnership is one element of a strategic plan to raise brand awareness within source markets to support ongoing hotel promotions while building demand for travel in 2021. The statement noted that Boston is one of the top four source markets in the U.S. and is currently a primary feeder market for the American Airlines flight out of Miami and Charlotte, as well as the Delta flight out of Atlanta. Boston Magazine reaches 1.9 million unique visitors on its website every month. Coming up in regional news, police surprised Grenadian busmen with search. The details when we come back. Like they do who are shopping at furniture and appliances. See my friend, you look like you buy something from the Ashley Home Store. How oh, you know? Because we get the cash back back coupons, coupons and, and the free groceries for a year. Cash back is back at Horsford's Furniture and Appliances and Ashley Furniture. Shop now and get a chance to win free groceries for one year. With Digicel. Collect scratch cards when you top up $20 or more at any Digicel reseller or store. Or pay your phone or home and internet bill in full. Scratch and match. Get two or more of the same digital app and you win a prize. It's that simple. Win cash, credit, vouchers, lunches, spa dates, Digicel merchandise, and more. Plus, take the top half of your scratch cards to any of our retail stores to qualify for even more prizes in the big draw. Stay tuned to our social media pages to find out how to double or even triple your chances to scratch and match. Top up or pay your bill today. Get scratching, get matching. Digicel, better together. WhatsApp Agility Exports today at 1-246-417-0477.
or email us at info at agilityexports.com to get yours now. And we're moving now to news on the regional scene. Some bus operators will face charges as several offensive weapons were confiscated by Grenada's police on Wednesday from their buses. This comes days after a video posted on social media shows drivers and conductors of two passenger buses involved in an altercation brandishing weapons. Christina John of GBN News has the details. Busmen were in for a surprise Wednesday morning as members of the Royal Grenada Police Force Eastern Division cracked down on the use of offensive weapons. These operations were conducted on the Granville bus terminus along the streets of Hermitage, Butch Grove, Granitang and St. David. Officer in charge of the division, Superintendent Sylvan McIntyre, says the operation was intended to counter what they deemed an emerging trend. Believed that uh, public transports were being um, used in a manner that was not conducive to to what we would call um, good service in, in, in the sense that people were being placed at risk and people were in fear that some things could happen. And this emanated out of a situation where um, a video circulated where we saw the behavior of some of these bus drivers and conductors, the way they conducted themselves, and it is believed that they were armed with offensive weapons. Several dangerous weapons were retrieved, Superintendent McIntyre says from reports, commuters as well as some busmen were quite cooperative. We were able to confiscate quite a number of offensive items, um, ranging from cutlasses, knives, modified screwdrivers, um, sticks, and other pieces of steel that could be used to harm persons. Um, quite a number of persons were charged for the offense or will be charged for the offense. And um, because we are very conscious of the hindrances and the inconveniences that could have been caused by persons going to and from work, the officers proceeded to um, deal with the situation and they will make the appearance in the court whenever that time comes. The officer left this assurance for the general public. The people of Grenada, Caraco, and Pitimatic, and in particular persons of the Eastern Division, they can count on us to be very assertive in our policing. We will be responsive, and we will also be proactive. If we think that things are going to happen, we are going to put measures in place to, to counter it. And we think that crimes can be on the increase, that people could be put into um, further fear and danger, and as proactive police officers, we will mount more operations, not just for bus drivers, not just for persons that are in public transport, but for every area of crime that we think we need to address. Chris Lina John, GBN News. There's growing pressure on the government to provide the necessary regulatory framework to continue supporting the work-from-home arrangement in the business process outsourcing sector in Jamaica. The policy in the sector is to come to an end on August 31st. More in this report. The government closed the BPO sector for two weeks in April due to a cluster of COVID-19 cases at a Portmore-based call center. As part of action taken to keep the sector afloat and minimize the public health risks, some BPO employees were able to work from home. Currently, 45% of the industry's workforce is still working from home. The arrangement is to end on August 31. President of the Global Services Association of Jamaica, Gloria Henry, says the regime has been working and the virtual work model should continue. She wants the government to be bold in its actions regarding the industry going forward. Work at home is doing very well for many of the sector members. Some companies have reported re realizing up to 7% in productivity. And um, we believe that that model will continue even after the COVID pandemic, which is why we are saying to Jamaica that the government needs to step out first ahead of competition because other countries, of course, are working at home now and they're seeing that model as something that they would continue after the pandemic. According to Henry, the virtual work model will also facilitate growth of the value chain in the industry in areas such as IT outsourcing, software development and legal process outsourcing. 
The association is also calling for proposed legislative amendments which have been languishing for years to be enacted. We have been lobbying for some changes to the Special Economic Zone Act 2016 to um, allow the sector to be more resilient, more flexible, um, to be able to grow and to be more globally competitive. So those amendments that have been outstanding for the last couple of years, we would want to see those amendments being made. The BPO sector has reported losses of $42.5 million as a result of the impact of the pandemic. Coming up, Africa's first mRNA COVID vaccines on the horizon. We'll tell you more when we come back. Imagine having the luxury of putting all your trust in one insurance company and being able to enjoy a life to the fullest without having to worry. Well, don't imagine. National Caribbean Insurance is here to take care of all your insurance needs. Insure your life, vehicle, boat, home, belongings and your future. At NCI, we make it our business to ensure that you enjoy every stage in life. We serve, we protect, we satisfy. That's NCI. back. Afigen Biologics expects a decision in mid-July about producing Africa's first COVID-19 vaccine using the mRNA platform. More in this report. Africa's first mRNA COVID-19 vaccine could soon be produced inside this facility. The World Health Organization picked Afrigen Biologics for the pilot. Now, the South African startup says it expects a decision from partners in mid July. Petro Teblanche is the managing director. This is the first step for us in Africa to establish cutting edge novel technology vaccine production suitable for fast track, rapid response, and to ensure that we have vaccine security on this continent. The $9 million tech transfer hub will make it possible for African companies to manufacture mRNA vaccines in 9 to 12 months. The advanced mRNA technology is used in Pfizer and Moderna shots. They currently require very cold storage. But to Blanche says Afrigen could access technology to produce a thermostable mRNA vaccine that could be kept at temperatures of between 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. Afrigen's facility will be capable of producing a maximum of 10,000 vaccine vials a day. It's also partnered with local manufacturer BioVac, which can produce 30 to 50 million doses a year to distribute across the continent. Pharmaceutical company Eli Lilly said on Thursday it will apply for U.S. health regulators' accelerated approval this year for its experimental Alzheimer's drug weeks after Biogen's Inc.'s controversial drug for the disease was approved. Here's more. Wall Street high on hopes for another Alzheimer's drug. Shares of Eli Lilly jumped 10% in early trading Thursday after the drug maker said it will apply for the Food and Drug Administration's accelerated approval for its experimental Alzheimer's drug this year. Lilly's stock had popped earlier this month when the FDA quickly gave the nod to Biogen's Alzheimer's drug. That decision sparked controversy as critics questioned the strength of the clinical data. Back in January, the company said early results from that trial had showed the drug slowed the rate of decline in cognition and function in patients at an early stage of the disease that causes memory loss. More than 6 million Americans currently suffer from Alzheimer's, and that number is expected to more than double by 2050, according to the Alzheimer's Association. It's the sixth leading cause of death in the United States. 
Um, next in sports, Jamaican sprinter Veronica Campbell-Brown hangs up her spikes and Trinidad and Tobago national footballers off to Miami. Stay with us. Imagine having the luxury of putting all your trust in one insurance company and being able to enjoy a life to the fullest without having to worry. Well, don't imagine. National Caribbean Insurance is here to take care of all your insurance needs. Insure your life, vehicle, boat, home, belongings, and your future. At NCI, we make it our business to ensure that you enjoy every stage in life. We serve. We protect, we satisfy. That's NCI. I took the vaccine because I want the in-person audience experience at Sugar Mass 50. I took the vaccine because I want to be performing with all my peoples on Ultra Truck this year for Carnival. I get vaccinated because I want to be on the road for Sugar Mass 50. The reason I chose to be vaccinated because of my profession as an entertainer was to have a safer boy to carry on. I am DJ Flame and I got vaccinated because I want Sugar Mass 50 to be greater than ever. I took the vaccine because I miss entertaining thousands of people and I miss hosting my own events. See you at Sugar Mass 50. Boom. Get vaccinated quickly to turn up Sugar Mass 50. First up in sports, Jamaican sprinter Veronica Campbell-Brown announced her retirement from track and field on Wednesday, bringing to an end one of the most decorated careers in the history of female sprinters. Campbell-Brown's career, which started at the junior level in 1997, saw her winning medals at all levels over 24 years. More in this TVJ Sport Report. Once again! With 19 Olympic and World Championships medals to her credit, including six goals, Veronica Campbell-Brown announced her retirement on Instagram on Wednesday. Campbell-Brown, now 39, said, quote, Through the grace of God, I have climbed from a small town in Trelawney, Jamaica, up the ladder of success to become one of the most decorated women in the Olympic Games and World Championship history, end quote. Her medal tally comprised eight Olympic medals and 11 at the World Championships. Campbell-Brown added, quote, as I take off my spikes, never to put them on again, this girl from Clarkstown walks away happy and contented with a race well run. End quote. Among her many accolades, Campbell Brown became the first Jamaican and Caribbean woman in the history of the Olympic Games to win a sprint Olympic title when she won the 200 meters in 2004 in Athens. TVJ Sports track and field analyst Hubert Lawrence says that she's one of the forerunners of Jamaica's golden era that lasted over a decade when the nation's sprinting prowess was on display. She gets going with her gold medal ahead of Alice and Felix at 200. Then the women win the 4x1. Then the next year, in the same location, Athens, Asafa goes there and breaks the world record and brings it home to Jamaica. The electronic world record comes home for the first time, 977. And those two things together kick-started the golden era. And then we had a time like no other. And she front and center in it. It was great to watch her run. In those outdoors, 100, 200 meters, 60, she was just that good. Campbell Brown is the only athlete in the world to win the 100 meters at the youth, junior and world level. And Lauren says her contribution to the sport is immense. I think Denise, the hallmark of Veronica's career, just a consistent producer in battle, fierce, productive and bullet quick across the Olympics. 2000, silver in the 4x1, gold in the 4x1, and 200 in 2004 with a bronze in the 100. She comes back 2008, wins the 200 again, comes back 2012, bronze in the 100 meters, comes back in 2016 as part of the relay team that gets silver. So much productivity. He adds that Campbell Brown, who has two 60 meter world titles from 2010 and 2012, is among the top three female sprinters of all times out of Jamaica. She may be the best alongside Merlin at 200 meters, world champion at 100 meters, not too many of those. And so you have to hand it off for being right up there with Merlin Arty, with Shelly and Fraser Price. That speaks volumes for someone who is literally on these that come the most, the best in the world. Campbell Brown's personal best of 10.76 seconds in the 100 meters 
ranks her all-time joint 11th in the world and fourth among Jamaican women. Her 200 meters best of 21.74 seconds also ranks her all-time joint 11th in the world. She's also ranked joint 10th all-time over 60 meters. Denise Walters for TVJ Sports. Trinidad and Tobago's national footballers are off to Miami where they will begin the final leg of their preparations for a crucial Gold Cup qualifier against Montserrat on July 2nd. More in this TTT Sports Report. National coach Angus Eve named a strong squad for the trip using mostly home-based players who have been training intently in recent days, hoping to perfect the style of play the new coach wants. While stars like Levi Garcia and Sheldon Bateau were unavailable, Eve welcomes back Kevin Molino to bolster the squad as they focus on the Gold Cup. The next game is the most important game. You know, um, the ones that already played, it's, it's gone already. It's unfortunate that uh, we didn't pass um, the first rounds in the World Cup. Uh, but at the end of the day, the new focus is the Gold Cup. And uh, we haven't, I haven't really discussed that with them because that time has gone. Um, so we're basically focusing in, on, on what we're doing going forward. And that's it for sports. When we come back, we'll have another look at the stories that made the headlines. Whether you're at home or abroad, ZNIZ's social media platforms help you stay connected with what's going on in St. Kitts and Nevis. Keep up with daily events by liking our Facebook page. Follow us on Twitter at ZBC Online. Like our pictures on Instagram and subscribe to our videos on YouTube. Also, you can watch us live on the ZIZ mobile app and our website, ZIZonline.com. No matter where you are, ZIZ is just a click away. ZIZ Broadcasting Corporation, reaching you wherever you are. And we're wrapping up with a recap of the top stories. More arrests made, persons breaching COVID regulations, additional quarantine sites approved, and Education Ministry taking extra steps to protect CXC exam students. And that's the end of the ZIZ Channel 5 newscast. Thank you for joining us. I'm Calla Verage.